everybody. Welcome. It's great to see everybody this morning. We have a phenomenal speaker. We have Ms. Shadonna McCall with the Moyno Marketing. Um, she is actually a graduate of Cable Tech Community College, and we are so glad to hear um, more about the Moyno Marketing. You guys, please help yourself to coffee and croissants, and let's give a, Ms. Shadonna a big round of applause. Welcome to the Mo Show. I said I always love a live studio audience, right? <laughs> so I am Shadonna Mo McFall. I am originally from Fayetteville, North Carolina. I graduated from Douglas Burr High School in 1996. Did I hear a whore? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Your English was right. <laughs> um, so I graduated from Douglas Burr in 1996, joined the Air Force in 1996, retired from the Air Force in 2000. 2016, came back to Fayetteville. I knew that I had my GI Bill. I didn't know nothing else, but I knew I had my GI Bill. I knew I was going to go to MCCC. So I remember coming back on the eve in May. You know, that was I retired in November. I came back. <laughs> I came back in May, did a little recon, started playing and went to the All American Vet Center to see what everything was going to be like. So when I got back, um, I think January was my first semester. Took a marketing class because I love marketing. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do marketing. So in the military, I was uh, information technology, so business admin. So I think I took maybe one class. I got my first leadership and marketing certificate and all of the things. And while I was on active duty, when I was stationed in Hawaii, I saw a lot of homeless veterans. So before Hawaii, I was in Korea and Germany. So majority of my career was overseas. So I go, I do all that. I get to Hawaii. It was, you have, how many people have been to Hawaii? You know how beautiful it is. Yes, right? it is. 80 degree weather all year round. So I get there and I see all these homeless people, all of these homeless veterans. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be homeless and all those things. So we would volunteer at the shelters and I would see women with babies and kids and it was so heartbreaking. So, you know, when I got my business, got my security clearance and everything was great. Um, a couple years later, had a baby and I had a, some mental challenges and I'm like, oh, I'm going to be homeless. So I was like, okay, not this time. But I was like, nope, you're going to start this nonprofit. You know, the, uh, you know, the lawyers, the accountants, all the things. So you got to save yourself. So I started um, multi roles and I thought everything was going to be great because there's homeless veterans here, homeless veterans there. So get fast forward. I leave Hawaii, go to New Mexico, and I only got a year left. So I felt like I was a senior in high school that had enough credits to graduate. I just had to do the time right check in every now and then. Y'all know how y'all students do. <laughs> <laughs> so did that. Um, got ready for retirement, did all my paperwork. So I had a really smooth transition admin side. Like I said, I was an admin person, so I could follow a checklist with the best of them. So retired, get back to Fayetteville, and I did this beautiful video, and I go talk to some people. They were like, well, do some stuff in Fayetteville and come back. Go make a name for yourself and come back. So now my heart broke, right? I'm like, oh my God. So, but Fayetteville, you kind of got to prove yourself. So, I'm like, okay, I can do this. So, got a couple jobs here in jail. I'm like, jobs they did. So, remember, I said I had my GI Bill, right? So, I'm like, you know, let me just do the school thing and all of the things. So, like I said, try to do the non. Well, I did do the nonprofit, but Fayetteville has 80 at the time. They probably got more than that now. Had 88 nonprofits for veterans. So. It kind of wasn't dazzling anybody. No one was in France. <laughs> so while I was doing them, uh, while I was taking my marketing classes, I also went upstairs to the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. At the time, Kent Hill was the director, and Jay Gilbert from Lumby Bank was my advisor. So he was like, well, Mo, if the nonprofit thing isn't working for you, why don't you do marketing, media, and PR for the nonprofit and the transition of service members and all of the things? Let's see you know what? You're right. So the Mo You Know was born. So that was in 2018 and here we are 2024. So I always tell people, you know, the Mo You Know was born right here at FTCC. <laughs> then got the, so I started the business. Then I said, okay, I heard on the radio working at Beasley at the time that they were looking for interns. I'm like, okay, but I go to college, college dude. I can get an internship. So I applied through the, um, 
work race learner program, got the internship at BC, and growing up, Fox in 89 was everything, right? So I get the internship with Fox in 89, I'm going out, I'm selling t well, giving away t-shirts, and hey, hey, I'll come over here, I'm going to be here, and all the things. So they, um, the market manager at the time, Erica BC, was like, well, Mo has a good personality. She should try sales. I said, oh, okay, I'll try sales. <laughs> <laughs> and the general manager at the time was like, Mo, in six months, you're going to love it or hate it. Six months, I didn't love it or hate it, but I had a five-year-old that was just in kindergarten for the first time, bouncing off the wall. My mom was like, uh-uh, get somebody else to do it. So I had to put him. <laughs> so... I spent a ton of money, ton of time getting him in the Boys and Girls Club. He spent maybe two days, and I just went to uh, Katie Lawless, who was the sales uh, manager. I said, Katie, I can't do this, you know, because I was worried about my son. And so I walked away from, you know, from sales to be a mom. Like, I could have stayed in the military if I was not going to be able to spend time with my son. And mentally, I was, I would go checking in. I'm like, this is not fair to her. It ain't fair to me. My son is scared. I was scared. So I'm like, let me get my baby and go home and do my class. <laughs> so um, I did that. And like I said, the mole, you know, was started like so right here at FTCC and what the mo you know is is a marketing and media consultant and PR business. I help small businesses with their visibility and credibility. Um, I do that through um, helping people with their digital footprint. So if you guys pull out your phone real fast, and you probably already do this because I've already pulled up my Google and I'm gonna show you some things. So I just want you to Google yourself. <laughs> He's looking like. <laughs> Just a quick Google yourself, and you don't have to share it with anybody, but I always tell business owners that I'm working with, if you're not the top you of you, you need to talk. If you don't have a digital footprint, you need to talk, especially if you're a business owner. Because one of the things I tell people when it's social media, <laughs> why are you laughing? Like Denny's in here in the fly hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Miss Daisy Fox was the my advice. <laughs> so yeah, so I tell people all the time, you know, social media is great, and most business owners start with social media. But I tell people, not everybody's on Facebook, not everybody's on TikTok, not everybody's on social media. But you know what, everybody is on. They're on Google when they're looking for this, that, and the third. They're going to Google, I need this, I need that. And I always tell people, nobody can buy anything from you if they don't know you. That's the first thing, making sure that people know you, know what you do, how you do it, why you do it, and all that thing. So I help folks with that. Um, so with my Google, I'm just going to highlight a couple of things that I did for credibility for exercise. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if it's not on Google, it's not a picture, it's not a video, it didn't happen. So back in 2020, the uh, VA recognized me as the veteran uh, veteran of the day. It kicked off, you know, first February, you know, Black History Month. So that was an honor. Um, here recently, I went to the Super Bowl uh, out in Las Vegas. So I got to do Super Bowl Media Week. Um, I got to come for the red carpet. Um, have a TV show now. Uh, yeah, so we record our podcast down at Deep Breathe and turn it into a TV show. You can watch it on All Stage Plus. Of course, I do. Not of course. I don't know that. But I do a um, a weekly radio show on WIDU every Monday at 10 a.m., the Moody No Growth Impact Show. Um, I'm actually nominated for a uh, Growth of the Year Award from the Future Richter Future Rich Aunties, they went on the radio show the other day. Um, so I've done a lot of things. Like I said, I help people, like I said, get on billboards. I also work with uh, JJ Jones uh, with the Fayetteville Press. So anybody who wants an ad in the press, I can sell you an ad. And every month he puts my banner up here so you can see me, hear me, um, and do all of the things. I help people, like I said, with press releases. I do some digital creation. For um, with the logo transitions, like this stuff, y'all should have never taught me how to do digital stuff. So I'm up all night playing <laughs> and making different creations. Um, 
I went out to a couple of years ago in 2019, I went out to LA. Like I said, I was working at Beasley. Steve Harvey was having his conference and I said, okay, I love Steve Harvey. You know, he yeah. makes the videos. He's like, nobody believed he was going to be on TV. Nobody believed he was going to be on radio. And he always tell people to jump. So I jumped. I went out there. I didn't tell a soul. I didn't tell anybody. I just got them tickets and I was on a plane. I remember I had just had to tell my stepdad, hey, you take me to the airport. Watch my son take me to the airport because I didn't want anybody to talk me out of anything because, you know, sometimes people be like, if you're dreaming too big, they be like, you can't do that. You know, stay small. I'm going out to LA. I'm going to be Steve. And I'd actually had had some of these bags made. So over there on the table, um, in the bags are the popcorn. So I have to do a lot of wordplay. So I'm like, get it popping with no. So y'all get a chance. It's red velvet uh, popcorn in the bags. And we're going to be raffling some of these off too. So um, on the bag is me. I just launched a new podcast, Mo Knows Love and Money. I don't have any, but I know it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so on the uh, podcast, like I said, I bring people on and we talk about love and money and you know, how we got it, how we keep it, how we how we lost it, you know, all of the things because education is everything. Yeah. You know, I really want a really entertaining guests because on the radio is really community. I want people to come on and talk about what they have going on in the community, different fundraisers, different causes. But for the podcast, you know, it's really niche down. I really want it to be entertaining because you have a choice. The radio, if your dial is on, you probably going to hear it just because it's on. But when you choose to listen to a podcast, you're making that choice because you have options. So I help, uh, and I help people start podcasts. So like I said, I work with Big Five, Big Five, with Deep Freeze Production. We have the beautiful studio because a lot of people now want to do podcasts. They want mm -hmm. to, you know, do the YouTube channel because believe it or not, and I know you probably know it, these companies are paying big money for the influencers who are doing the things that they necessarily don't want to do, that they have the audience to help push their brands. And like I said, I'm getting into brand ambassadorship. So like I said, I'm working with different businesses to put my brand on their products and sell it because that was one of the things um, when I was working at Beasley, I did not want to, I, not even I think I want to sell, I was scared to sell and I was scared of the nose. I'm not scared of the nose. <laughs> I'm not scared of the nose anymore. I'm not scared of anything getting more because it was fear. <laughs> so, it is so much that I don't want to uh, ramble on. But does anybody have any questions about anything so far? I, 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 yeah. I, I need to say, I gotta admit that you must have really had a busy life. Oh, no, no, uh, no. Uh, oh. oh, how about you really think that when, when, when you started the mode, you know, <laughs> you, when, I see that in the, was it successful? Um, I also see that, I also see that it's also like part of the movie because you get this, the second O in the O in the logo is the uh, film reel, and then you also have a particular platform. Yes, yeah, so that just represents me. What I tell people all the time, I want to be Oprah. I want to do. <laughs> this high. is my audience. We're Oprah looking on camera. This is it. <laughs> I can pull up a chair and interview somebody right now if somebody's willing to do. <laughs> but so yeah, all that represents um, the marketing, the media, the public relations. Um, because I want to be in Hollywood, like I said, and now Hollywood is everywhere. Physical is Hollywood, right? So all you need is a camera. And like I said, if that turned the the podcast to the TV show, and you know, I, I always have my camera, and I just made it my own because I remember I was working at the chamber. And does anybody know who Adolf Thomas is? He used to work in the uh, Center for the uh, Economic Department, and I'm like, hey, I want to be on Fame TV. He's like, well. Pull out your phone and start a YouTube channel. So ever since then, I just documented everything. So I pulled out my phone. I don't miss a beat when it comes to the phone because it's so easy now. You don't need the big producers, the big director. You can produce and do things yourself. So that's, you know, one of the things that I did to, you know, really get people to know who I was because 
And I, I know Kelly, you all know. <laughs> if you follow me on Facebook, I am everywhere doing everything because people need to know. Like I said, there's so many people, so many people doing marketing and media PR, but I tell people all the time, you, you don't have the energy I have. You don't have, and I'm not saying this to be cocky. You don't have the influence I have. You don't, you didn't shake the hand. You didn't kiss the babies. You didn't go on the eight year boot camp that I went on at Cumberland County to get to know what I know. So, and, you know, I, and I'm very proud of that. Like I said, I'm very proud to be from Cumberland County. Very proud of that. Because we're very proud to be a Trojan. Um, I just want people to know once you get out in the military, there are all kinds of resources, but you have to do the main work. You have to take the initiative. So just Monday, I went and talked to Scott from the All-American uh, Vet Center. So September the 18th, uh, the more you know is going to be hosting Warrior Wednesday. And I know Lori's going to ask me, you know, how can we help? So I'm going to go ahead and tell you. <laughs> 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 it's not my first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> so how many people actually work for the college? Okay, so this is my ask. September 18th, which is also the Air Force birthday. And I know this is Army Country USA, and we celebrate the Army's birthday, and we have the big cake and the swords, and we do the thing. I've never seen, and I, I've never seen it. I've never seen the Air Force birthday celebrated here in Fayetteville. And I was actually stationed on Pope, even when I was on Pope. I don't think we celebrated. I don't think we had a ball. If we did, I missed it because I was probably deployed. I don't know. But for this year, I would really like to partner with FTCC, all the departments, and make this the biggest celebration for the Air Force, the biggest celebration for the Georgia Wednesday, because we have, remember I told you about the nonprofit and the veterans, that's still the heart of who I am. So I want to make sure the veterans know they can come to school. I want to make sure they know they can come to FTCC and they can start a career and they can do all the things they want to do because I've done it. Other people have done it. And I tell people, if you can't make it at FTCC, you just can't make it because y'all have <laughs> Seriously, and they just don't know. A lot of times, because, you know, the military people have taught you this, showed you this, they've held your hand the whole way. So we can still do that. There's nothing wrong with needing guidance because you need guidance. That's why we have advisors because you don't know what you don't know. So I want to work with uh, FTCC to make sure that we're celebrating the Air Force, we're mm -hmm. celebrating our warriors and we're getting the people the information and we're supporting and pushing out the more you know because like y'all heard the problem the more you know is not a parent. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yes, yes. And I also gave out some sponsorship uh, packages. So on April the 18th, I'm working with the Crown, um, distinctly fed because we're going to start doing Welcome to Cumberland County Mixers. Because one another thing that I know is when I was in the military, we always had newcomers briefings. I'm here at the school. I know y'all do orientation, but we don't have anything big for the county when you get here. You need to know who you need to know. You need to know what you know. You need to know where all the things are before you need it. Like they say, fix your roof when the sun is out. <laughs> um, and so I have a whole lot of things coming up. I'm working with a lot of folks. Um, just to make Cumberland County, you know, a popular place to be at the popcorn. Um, but I'm really excited about all the opportunities, all of the uh, people that I'm working with. And I want to keep working with folks. I want to keep helping to connect those dots because well, I'm, I'm going to say it and I'm going to say it and I'm going to say it because people don't know what they don't know. They don't know who they don't know. So I love to do those more um, handoffs and I love warm handoffs. I love when you're having a conversation and you hear somebody say, hey, I need a speaker. I need a panelist. I need this. I need that. I want mold. The mold, you know, to be top of mind. I learned that at Beasley at Seals. You got to be top of mind when you're selling because of people, they may not need it now, but when they need it, you need to be the first person that they think about. Yes, ma'am. Question. Um, I always wonder with um, advertisement being so, I guess, different mediums social media or whatever the case may be. Um, as a business owner, do you still think there's a place in a radio? Oh, absolutely, because like I said, I worked in radio. Most of the time, people, and y'all know we have our serious XM and all the things, but most of the time, people are still listening to the radio. You got to find the radio station, and they have the Nielsen ratings where they tell you who's listening, when they're listening. Um, you got to know your audience, and you got to know which radio station has your audience. 
And when you're purchasing radio, you know, you got to spend enough to have the right frequency, the right reach, the right message. To be honest, anything works if you work it. So, and I know a lot of times when I work with small businesses, they can't necessarily afford all of the things. So that's where the Mo You Know came in because I'm like, okay, I want to get you in the game. I want you to get in the game. I want you to start with whatever, however you want to start. If you want to start with radio, if you want to start with TV, if you want to start with newspapers, if you want to start with billboards, social media, magazines, just start somewhere. And we can continue to lay on, lay your <laughs> arm because, you know, I have a lot of military analogies when you get cut. Have any medics in here? No medics. So they teach you when you get cut, you put on a band aid. Don't take that band aid off. You put another layer on, you put another layer on, you put another layer on. So that's how I work with my clients to build their presence, you know, online and offline. Because offline, like I said, I'm at the events, I'm shaking the hands, I'm kissing the babies, I'm taking your name. Hence, Jerome Scott, my sponsor, I'm his client. He's my client. He sponsors me and I say, hey, I'll take you everywhere I go to if you sponsor <laughs> Did that answer your question, man? And then with the radio, too, the radio stations now, they understand that people think radio is dead. They have the digital products. They have the things where you can be on their websites and on their social media. And have you ever been to this gas station and Maria Menudo's come up? That could be you, too. <laughs> so do we have any other questions? Mayor Beth Flower, how did I do on eyes and arms? <laughs> I'm kidding. I, so I just recently joined Toastmasters because that was one of the things when I was in New Mexico, I had a whole lot. Well, I joined in Hawaii, like I said, PCS, went to New Mexico, had a lot of time to kill. And uh, I started going to Toastmasters. So Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. was on Mountain Time, but I still get the notifications every Tuesday saying, you know, you need to be a Toastmasters. And that helped me get comfortable because before I was a stuttering idiot, but <laughs> so I knew I had to change that because I knew I knew what I was talking about, but no one was going to take me serious if I didn't deliver the message clear enough. So you did use the word of the day, <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So I am, like I said, I am extremely excited. Uh, like I said, to be back at Fairfield Tech. It has been a blessing. Like I said, y'all showed me so much love. Everything that I've done, you know, it was right here. Well, I started right here because, you know, you needed that support. And I think Laura mentioned it earlier, his family is home. So I remember you coming in, Mom. Yeah. And you're telling me all this stuff that you wanted to do. And I'm like, go for it. Do it. Yes, you can. And you have. I am so proud of you. And I thank you because, like I said, you sat down, you need to take this, you need to take this, you need to take this, and we needed that. We needed that. And I know I want to talk to you about the clothes closet, too. <laughs> okay, we do have it. Okay. <laughs> that's what, you know, the thing is, the whole presentation, because a lot of times uh, when people get out the military, you don't know what you need to wear and all of the things. So, and I said, I have everything. And I know Dr. McCray, you know, she helped start the food bank and all of the things. Everything that you need is right here at Bill Ticket. People just come on. Well, and y'all do a great job advertising. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I say, I'm so very proud of you. Yes. Thank you. I you make me proud today. Oh, yes. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I remember she came out to Beasley. Uh, when I got my internship, but you know you have to do the checkups, right? So thank you. <laughs> right. And when you get a chance, tell us more about the Super Bowl because I saw I started thought uh, we're friends on Facebook yeah. now, and I was so excited to see. I like lived it through you. So oh you my gosh! So I'm gonna get her question, and I'm gonna go back to the Super Bowl. Please do. Good job. I enjoyed your presentation. By the way, you're just a, you're full of energy and a breath of fresh air. So that's all I do. I think people will automatically be attracted to you for that positive. Positivity, but my question is, um, what would you say would be your biggest challenge to, to overcome or try to overcome? So the biggest challenge, like I mentioned earlier, is like I said, when I got back to you know Cumberland County, just making sure that people knew me. You know what they say, the know, the like, the trust. I had to go out and I say it, shake the hands, kiss the baby. So trying to break back into the different social circles, the different. The different things that's really been the biggest challenge, but because I didn't want to play the game, 
I'm like, I know, I know what I'm talking about. I don't need to play this game. But what I realized, it wasn't about me. It's about the people that I want to serve. I tell people when I retired, I want to serve the veterans and I want to serve the kids in Cumberland County, paying it forward and paying it back and bridging that gap. So, you know, sometimes I just go places I don't want to go because God's telling me to go. So I just <laughs> yes, ma'am. Just one more thing before you get into the Super Bowl. I want to say thank you for all of the shout outs and kudos you did say at the fact and the people that impacted you because you're our purpose. Mm -hmm. And I feel a lot of times we get in this rut where we don't remember the purpose we have. Is that thank you? Thank you. And I tell and I'm big on paying homage because people would get to where they're going. And my biggest pet peeve is when people have. Uh, events and they get up and they thank everybody but the people who helped them. I'm like, <laughs> 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 so I'm very big on letting people know because I know it's your job, but you don't have to. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have people don't have to take the extra time and the extra effort. And I appreciate it because, like I said, we, we needed it. I needed it. Um, and to your point, I was at a, a ranch so on. June 29th, out at Mosby Ranch in Linden is a horse farm. When I first met the gentleman who owns the ranch, you know, I show up, I'm laughing. He was like, and he told the story, I recorded it. He was like, you were smiling too much. He's like, I had to watch you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. I'm like, what's not to be happy about? What's not to? I'm like, okay, I made it out of the military. You know, I'm retired. I'm doing what I always, I never prayed for money. I prayed for freedom. I say, God, if you give me the time and the freedom to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it, I can make money. And that's what he gave me. So I'm really happy about that. So if we have any other questions before I start talking about my Super Bowl. Yes, sir. Bro, I want yeah. How involved are you with Devon with the rebranding of the city of Fayetteville and Cumberland? So good question. So I it was so funny. I met you, and so it was so back for MLK. I did an MLK Day celebration and appreciation, and I went to the uh, the breakfast, and that was one of the things I didn't really want to go to, but Jerome gave me a ticket and was like, "Come on!" So I'm glad I did because I met um, Devin, and he was talking to Jesse, and I just was like, "Hey, I am moving, yada yada yada." I'm going to the Super Bowl, so. Um, the rebrand, I was actually working at Sweet Valley Ranch. I had a um, a contract with Sweet Valley Ranch, and Mr. Surgeon was actually over the, um, he was the board chair for the Stinkley Fed Mill at the time. So I didn't have too much to do with that, but I know when they came to Sweet Valley Ranch to highlight all the things in Fedville, I was a part of showing them that piece of it. But Jennifer and I, we've sat down the whole Cumberland, welcome to Cumberland County, that's a partnership, a collaboration, because although they deal with tourism, you got to take care of the people who live here all the time. If the people that live here don't know what's going on, how are they going to tell their family members when they come to visit? So they're going to Raleigh, Charlotte. I'm like, no, y'all, there's things to do here. So uh, I'm trying to get Deb and Jennifer to come on the radio show, and I think they will. It's just been, a, they, you know, they're doing the, the rebrand, and yeah. they got a million things well, going on. Yes. Yeah. But we are working on this Welcome to Cumberland County. Mix her together. That's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, uh, come over and tell me the next one. And then um, I'd like more information about our presentation because they really, they really, they really have an opportunity to participate so that people will know. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to give you, and I have these. Um, did everybody get one of these? No, I don't know. So this is, like I said, my sponsorship package, and this covers all the events that we're doing for the year. So you will have an opportunity to get the, you will have an opportunity to sponsor, to be um, a vendor. Uh, we got the first one, the crown is donating the ballroom, because Dorothy was like, I wish I would have thought of this. I'm like, well, you saying yes is good enough right now. <laughs> So, you know, we really want people to, you know, to come out to mix and mingle and get your business out there to all the new people who are coming and the people who are leaving. Like I talked about the military, the hills and farewells, bring your neighbors out that just moved to town. Yes, ma'am. She was asking more about the Cumberland County Mixer that's coming up April the 18th in the Crown Ballroom. We're working with... Um, Distinctly Fedville, Dr. Colvin from the Junior League. I said, Dr. Colvin, you're like our Michelle Obama. You're the first lady. <laughs> so and we're getting those 
Rotary Clubs, those Kiwanis Clubs, getting all of those service organizations, all the businesses together so people know to find their clique, to find their village, to find their tribe. Because when you don't know anything, and I'm, when I'm at these events, women are always coming up to me like, I'm just here. I don't know anybody. <laughs> And we're going to do them uh, once a quarter. Uh, the first one, like I said, is April 18th. The next one's going to be in July and then October. And then we'll roll over for the next year. And by 2025, hopefully we'll have the momentum um, that we need. Yes, ma'am. I see you have a lot of avenues that you want to. How do you separate businesses or everything from the one from one? So I tell people I run the mo, you know, like a record label. So with, you know how when the, the rappers and the singers collaborate? So I do a lot of collaborations. Um, so yeah, it's all under, so my brand is the Mo, you know, but I work with other brands to get them to collaborate with other brands. And so your brand is your brand, my brand is my brand, but we work together. So is that, did that answer your question or what you talking about? The like, do you separate Podcast versus doing the TV, is it all different entities or everything is just that one? Everything is mo. <laughs> Word of the day, everything really? is mo. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you mentioned where you're going. Yes. What else can the community do for the Mo You Know Marshall? How can we help you? So, the Mo You Know, I would like I said, I would love referrals if y'all want to come on the podcast, if y'all want to come on the, the radio show, you know, helping me get the word out, helping when people are looking for a marketer, you know, giving me those kudos, giving me, hey, I know Mo, Mo's a good person. And that's really, when we talk about marketing, that word of mouth, that trust, that um, that credibility, that's everything. Because a lot of times people have been burned with marketing. They were like, oh, I did this. And like with radio and, oh, it didn't work. They didn't do it enough. <laughs> so that, that's one of the things that you can help me with. Uh, like I said, helping keep my name out there, keeping me visible, keeping me relevant. Because I have one more quick question to piggyback off what you just said. I have a couple of students tonight that I think would not mind going like on the radio and talking to you. Did, but they're worried about being so nervous and not knowing what to say. Would you help script them and Sure, yes, and actually, I have a media training that I would love to work with. I saw that on your website yesterday. Yes, and that's the thing. Uh, people, and I know people like to be stripped. I'm like off the cuff, but I know everybody's not me. You know, they need a little coaching, and I guess I can definitely okay. help with that. So we're going to get back to my Super Bowl. <laughs> so when I said uh, I was going to do the podcast, I put it out on the on my Facebook. You know, a lot of times people are like, don't tell anybody until it's done because people are trying to sabotage it. I don't believe that. I'm like, whatever you say we're going to do, we're going to do it. And no man or no woman can stop it. So I put it out there. And the guy, David Watts from On Stage Plus, he was like, well, Mo, where are you going to distribute the podcast? And I'm like, I don't know. But I'm going to shoot it and we'll figure all that out later. <laughs> so he was like, I got, you know, On Stage Plus and we got on the Zoom call and we talked about it. And he told me, he was like, hey, you know, we cover Super Bowl Media Week. You've been doing it for the last eight years. So I said, okay. And then we got the phone. I thought about it. I'm like, I'm going to ask him. I ask a lot. I used to uh, be a chaplain's assistant, and my chaplain would always say, you have not because you asked me. And so I said, you only can tell me two things, no or no. And most of the time, <laughs> <laughs> you got two choices. <laughs> so I asked him, I said, hey, um, do you need some help? Or, you know, the Super Bowl. And he was like, you know, like, let me talk to my wife. So he talked to his wife. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So he sent me a email. The Super Bowl, the Super Bowl Soulful uh, Celebration was looking for people to do the red carpet. So they had an easy Google form. I filled out the Google form. And like I said, I what with the newspaper. I'm on the radio. I got the podcast. So I guess they checked me out and they saw that I was credentialed. And they invited me to cover the red carpet. And I met some phenomenal people. I'm um Jim Brown was on the red carpet. Tim Brown, James Brown, Jim. Um, Tim Brown, who was in the Hall of Fame. Um, what else did I meet? I met an executive from CBS. 
It was just phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Then that was Wednesday night, and the show was actually recorded for CBS. So they're still still on Paramount. And one of the things that I loved about that, they started, you know, all the sponsors started coming. You know, I was like, okay. Because it, originally it was the Super Bowl gospel celebration. So the lady, uh, Melody Few, she was like, she went to the Super Bowl one year. She had so much fun. She's like, by Sunday, by the time she got home, she said she felt so guilty. She's like, we need to have gospel in here. <laughs> and she's like, she wrote the NFL seven times. And they kept telling her, no, no, no. Then finally they said, hey, if you can get Gladys Knight, we'll give it to you. So Melody's from Atlanta. Gladys is from Atlanta. So that's just like me picking up the phone and calling. Like I know one of the guys who does my hair, Mark Stoss. He's like a big name here. That's just like, if you can get Mark, of course I can get Mark. Of course I can get people in Fayetteville. So they didn't know that she knew. Gladys. She got Gladys. And I actually met Gladys Knight's manager at breakfast because wow. so we stayed in the ponds and that's where the event is. We saw Mary Mary, um, Kirk Franklin, uh, Robin Thicke was there, T-Pain, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yes. So she just talked about her resilience. And that's one thing about me. You can tell me no a million times. I'll say that's your no. That's not my no, that I'm not going to get it. <laughs> and then the Friday, like I said, David, once again, Sent my name in to get credentialed to be on the floor for Super Bowl Media Week. That's when all the athletes, I saw Emmett Smith. I got a picture with Adrian Peterson. I didn't even know half the players, but I know. I was like, we're going to figure this out later. I said, y'all want to play a game, name that player. So I got my content, right? <laughs> I got my content. I said, y'all don't know who they are. It don't even matter. Um, So I was just walking up to people. Hey, can I get a picture? Can I get a big, you know, so anything? Yes. So that's what it's all about because they want to stay relevant to make him new. And oh my God, that was the highlight. I said, Kim, we miss you. Come back. And this was before the brawl. So, <laughs> this was before Camp's Cam um, fiasco. But, you know, for me, just having the courage to walk up to these strangers, to these millionaires, to say, hey, can, can, can we talk? And that's what you got to do in business sometimes, not be scared to talk to anybody about anything. They can only say no, yes or no, or let's talk about it later, or not. Or they can blow you off, and the people didn't blow me off. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so phenomenal. Like I said, Trevor, and I seen Commissioner Glenn Adams at the MLK breakfast. I said, do you want me to uh, say I'm from Fayetteville or Cumberland County? He was like, Fed, uh, Cumberland County. <laughs> so like I said, I did the press releases. Let me go back. Go back, go back, go back. I know there's a button. Come on, you can do this. Okay. So we did the, uh, like I said, did the press releases, and and I also work with the E.E. E. Smith Sports Hall of Fame, May 26th. That bank, what is coming up? We're looking for sponsors for that. I actually had a, a influencer deal with ADP. That was pretty cool. But yeah, so I did. It normally pops up all of the things that I did, but I did the the press release saying, you know, Cumberland County native, and I did Air Force native. Anything that I could do to, you know, to get the word out there that I was going. And like I said, a lot of the media outlets, you know, picked it up, and it was it was fun, a lot of fun. And I'm getting ready to go back to New Orleans to go 59, and like I said, I can take y'all with me. This all right. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's get these sponsors and let's go. <laughs> Did anybody else have any questions? Mayor Beth and her mom time. Matter of fact, can we make that a field trip? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shadana. Fantastic presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So do we have anything going on in the community that anybody would like to talk about? 